بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد In the name of Allah the most high the most merciful I ask Allah the most high and the most merciful to send his peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. Bismillah. Now, today's sitting is about oppression. What's oppression? Oppression is to put something in the, the incorrect place. Now, if we look at this at a more practical Islamic way, we can say oppression is delaying the rights of someone or taking the rights of someone. Now, having these meanings in our mind, are we trying to implement them in our daily lifestyle? Are we implementing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? And moreover, the Quranic verses of Allah Are we? Are we getting ready to meet? Are we getting ready to meeting our Lord? Are we getting ready to be judged by Allah, the Most High? Are we living a life of non-oppression? Now, the reason why I thought of this topic today is things that I'm seeing, things that I'm seeing in life that are the exact meaning of oppression now you have many hadiths where the prophet wasalam, warned us against oppressing others so the prophet wasalam, warned us against oppressing a muslim oppressing another muslim and also a muslim oppressing a disbeliever the prophet wasalam, said to one of his companions beware of the invocation or the supplication of the oppressed one are we keeping this in mind when we're dealing with our brothers and sisters or we're just saying oh it's oh, it's no problem why are we differentiating islam from our daily lifestyle is islam something you implement only in the masjid so we go in the masjid we are pray and we off we're off the best manner the best etiquette in the masjid when we leave the masjid it's a total different face are we conscious that this could be a form of hypocrisy are we conscious that this could be a two-faced muslim i'm advising myself first and then you my muslim brothers and sisters we have to fear Allah every minute and we have to implement Islam in our lives all the time. Not only in the masjid. In the masjid we pray, yes. Outside the masjid we do what the sunnah and the Quranic ayahs have advised us to do. Allah has said in his book, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسِكِي وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ Say, verily, verily, my prayer, my slaughtering, so Allah says in the Quran, say that verily, 
your prior, your form of slaughtering, your living and your dying is for your Lord. That means you implement Islam on a daily aspect. You fear Allah in what you do. You give people their rights at their time. Now, throughout my life and up to today, up to today, I've seen many forms of oppression. Oppression in terms of the employer um, um, oppressing his employee. Now, this can come in many faces or in many categories oppression. Some of which I will mention now. One is the delaying of the salary. It's known according to the agreement that you have that you should be paid at a, according to a specific date, according to the, what you say, the agreement between the two par parties. Why did they delay the salary until five, six days without a clear reason? Why? Is it because we love money too much? Is it the, because we don't believe that we'll go back to Allah, Allah Azawajal? Is that the case? Do we believe that we're just here to have fun and to do as we like? We go to the masjid and we pray us, but when we leave the masjid, it's a different face. Why are we putting our desires over the sunnah? Why are we loving how we feel more than loving the way of Al-Islam. Why is this? Are you giving account for your actions before Allah judges you, judges you on the day of judgment? Now, I've seen a situation, a personal situation, and I'll give you the details now. It's a story about a man. I will not mention the nationality, and I'll keep the information general. This guy, and Allah knows best his situation. This guy, at a young age, studied in a country, and he gained a bachelor's degree in a special science, right? He came back, or he went to another country, and he worked. While working, he was given the position of a manager in a big oil company. Big oil company. So that means he was work, working and making money. Now, to my understanding, this guy had a high rank wherever he worked. He was the boss in every company. And this was throughout his life. Now, the guy has gotten older. And his life has totally changed. Changed in, in a dramatic way. He has, is no longer able to work, that's one. He's not making money. And he has accidents now and then, physical accidents where he falls and or hurts himself or injures himself now and again. Now, his situation has deteriorated so much that whenever he lives in a place, the so-called landlord kicks him out or takes him to the police in order to force him to pay for the rent. Now, I'm saying to myself, this guy was such and such manager in such a place. Why his situation has changed so much to the extent that he's being thrown out of a place at the last end of his life. He's not making money. Now, one has to ask himself, was this guy an oppressor? Did he used to fear Allah? when he was managing people? Was he constant in his fearing of Allah all the time when dealing with his employees? Was he? Or did he do, did he do something wrong in his life and someone made a supplication against him? Did this happen? One has to be conscious of this. The Prophet and even the Quran speaks against oppression. Even if the guy is not a Muslim, we should have respect for him. Because what? He can supplicate to Allah and Allah answers his prayer. Even the Quran, Allah says, 
Allah la'natullah ala zalimin. Isn't the curse of Allah upon the pressure oppressors? Now, when will we start living and implementing the sunnah in our life? When will we start keeping away from oppressing others? And there's a prophet, there's a saying of the Prophet wasalam, The person, the muflis, you might have heard of this hadith. But repetition, repetition is for emphasis. Now, when the Prophet says, said to this companion, Atadrun man al muflis, he said to the companions, Do you know who is the one that doesn't have any dinar? He's a poor guy, we would say in, in our layman terms. So the companions responded, Yes, we know the person that is a muflis, the one that doesn't have any money or any, any, any monetary means. So the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, He's the person on the day of judgment that doesn't have any, and he comes with this wealth. Don't see stuff for Allah. He comes with this, all these deeds. Because on the day of judgment, you will not have any wealth. So the, so the Prophet ﷺ went and he explained who is that poor guy. Now this is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he explained. Now this guy, he was an oppressor in his life. He came on the day of judgment with salat, zakat, hajj, all these good actions. And what will happen? Allah will give him his reckoning. So that guy, when he was in the worldly life, he oppressed people. Now on the day of judgment, Allah will give him his legal and his equal reward. So this oppressor, which is a muflis, the poor guy on the day of judgment, he comes with all these acts of worship and he, he, he oppressed these certain people in his life. So what Allah will do, Allah will take his good deeds and give it to the people he oppressed. And when all his good deeds are finished, what will happen? What will happen after that? The people that he oppressed with bad deeds, their bad deeds will be taken and given to that oppressor. And then what will happen? وَعِيَاذَ بِاللَّهِ I seek refuge with Allah. That oppressor will be thrown into the fire. Now that's the end result of oppressing people. So, your good, all your good deeds will go away. And you will take the bad deeds of people and then you will be thrown in the fire. Brothers and sisters, fear Allah and keep away from oppression. Think about it. Th think about the different types of oppression that can happen and the different types of, oppression, of oppressions that you have run through. Now, if you have done any form of these oppression, whether delaying of the pay, whether oppressing someone, whether calling someone a bad name that he is not that part or that type of character, you should go and ask that person for pardon before you both die and he takes it from you on the day of judgment. We have to be conscious about this and so forth. So oppression, oppression comes in many categories and we have to be clear about them. We can do research more about the issue and we, we must be judge, justful to each other in the way we act. So be just to our brothers and sisters, to be just to the people that are working under us. Be just to the people that we're given power over. Give them their rights. Go with the contract that you have been mixed with or been, uh, um, how should I say, that you have agreed upon. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu awfu bil that's a verse. O people that believe, fulfill the conditions. The condition, the agreement that you have. Fulfill it. Because going against it, what will happen? You'll be oppressing each other. And that's haram. And we don't want, on the Day of Judgment, our priors, our fasting, all these actions that we work so hard for in this life, to go away from us just like that and then 
وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Seek refuge with Allah Then we go to the fire So this is a time to make your deeds correct If you have done any form of this oppression in your life Go first, seek forgiveness from Allah, the Most High Then you go and ask a person to pardon you And you make it up to him Because today you have actions and no reckoning. Tomorrow, you'll be reckoned and no actions. So be conscious of this. Be conscious of this throughout your life. Ask yourself on a minutely basis, am I fearing my Lord the way that the Quran has said and the way the Prophet Muhammad has lived his life? Are we keeping away from oppressing? Are we keeping away from slandering? Are we keeping away from backbiting? Are we keeping away from, of, from, what should I say, spying and all these on Islamic things? Are we keeping in mind these hadith that the Prophet Wasallam has advised us in order to be on the good side or on the good path until we meet Allah the Most High? Thank you for listening. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله